advanced class, mm -hmm. I think, oh, I should do the, the beginner class because right. every time I feel, is I, I always feel like I, I need to learn, learn, and learn, and learn. Okay, well, yeah. you never stop learning, so welcome, welcome. Uh, we'll work on pronunciation and, and things like that as we go. Very good. Essa. Hello. Hello. Tell us about yourself, please. Okay. My name is Esa. I'm from Kazakhstan, Central Asia. Mm -hmm. So I'm a university student. Mm -hmm. I'm a sophomore, and I'm I study languages. So I'm getting ready for past IELTS. Ah, very good. Yeah, okay. My major my major is to be advanced level. Okay, your your major is advanced level. Okay, very good. Welcome. I hope you uh, enjoy this class. Furkan, hello. <laughs> <laughs> we can't escape each other. <laughs> Welcome. My name is Furkan. I'm from Turkey. I'm 18 years old. I'm here to talk more. Okay. Very good. Roberto. Hello. Uh, hi. Hi. My name is Roberto. I am 28 years old. And nice to see you all again. Welcome. Good. That's great. Servet. Oh, hello. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Servet. Most of us uh, know each other. Mm -hmm. uh, I am from Turkey. I'm 23 years old. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Welcome, welcome. Victor. Hi, my name is Victor. I'm from Peru. I'm 33 years old. Um, it's my first time. Okay, your 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 sound. It's um um. There's an echo in in your room, Victor. Um, what uh. Now, where are you from? It's hard uh, to hear you. I'm from Peru. I'm from Peru. Peru. Okay. Yeah. All right. Welcome. Welcome. Hey, Servette, James, Jane just posted that you got a job promotion. Will you tell us oh. about that, please? I have a job promotion? That's what she said. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe Jane, Jane has a big company and she, maybe she wants to be in a position. <laughs> Well, I will take Jane's word for it. Uh, congratulations if they are in order. <laughs> All right. Oner. Oner. Hello. Hello. Hi, everybody. My name is Oleg. It's my first time on Kalingo. I live in Ukraine and I'm a student. And I would like to improve my language skills, my spoken okay. English. Great. I mean, your, your English is quite good now. Um, this is a conversation class, so... Um, I'm hoping I'm hoping you get some of what you're looking for, all of you. Okay, because it's conversation, we need to have something to talk about. Now, I picked one of my favorite topics, which is poetry. I love poetry. Not everyone does. So, I'd like to start out by talking about some of this. And if you guys have something you'd rather talk about, it's a conversation class. So, come in with whatever you would like. Okay. Um, would anyone like to speak about something? Converse? Victor? Victor, I'm sorry, when we hear you, we think you're taking part in the class, so please. <laughs> um, okay, okay, talk, okay, with <laughs> talk with okay, us. <laughs> That's all right. Um, anyone, would anyone like to introduce a topic? Okay. I have three poems to talk about. Um, one is a very, very beautiful but sad poem. One is a kind of funny poem. And one is a very hopeful poem. Um, let me start out with a hopeful one. Because I, I only now discovered this. And um, let's see if you guys can name this particular poem. Or the, the guy who wrote this. All right? And here we go. Let me bring it up. This poem is called The Rose That Grew From Concrete. And let me see if I can get uh, someone to read that for me. Uh, let's see. Um, ah, you know who wrote it. I'm gonna hide that. Uh, let's see. How about um, Roberto? Can you read that, please? The Rose That Grew From Concrete. Mm hmm did you hear about the rose that grew from a crack in the concrete? Proving nature's law is granite. Uh, 
Learn yeah. to walk to walk without having feet. Funny it seems, but by keeping its dreams, it learned to breathe fresh air. Long live the rose that grew from concrete, while no one else ever cared. Okay. I read that, and I thought, wow. Um, now, there is no one right interpretation of poetry, okay? So, Roberto, when you read this, what do you think about? Mm, like a struggle, uh, to struggle some obstacles and doing uh, something that seems impossible to them. Mm, okay. Um, all right. And why do you say that? Because it's hard to find uh, a rose growing from uh, cracking the concrete. I guess it's it's not it's natural habitat. It's not supposed to grow from the concrete. Okay. Why? Mm, because it's um, and you don't see many roses out of concrete. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no dirt. <laughs> okay. Would would someone else like to talk about this one? Oh, come on. <laughs> All right, let's, let me talk about <clears throat> some of the images that help you say that. Now, poetry should not talk to your logical mind, okay? It, it should not talk to your brain, okay? Poetry, any good poem, talks to you right here, okay? Talks to you in your stomach, and it talks to you in your soul. And I saw that in this poem. Okay, as Roberta pointed out, a rose that grows from a crack in concrete, okay, I mean, it, it doesn't happen. Now, there is another, an old song that talked about a rose in the city, okay, um, called Spanish Harlem. And I think the, the guy who wrote this, the poet who wrote this, is referencing that old song because... That saying, you know, as black as the rose is, that rose is a person, a rose in Spanish Harlem. So could a rose here be a rose that is a person? Um, because here, look at this. Look at this. Proving nature's law is wrong, it learned to walk without, and could be without as one word, having feet. Uh, Oner, what do you think? Did you ask me? Yes, I am. Uh, Read that line and then tell me about it. I understand lots of these words. Okay, well, which ones do you not know? Let's go there. I can't understand the uh, full uh, full meaning of this poem. Okay, but well, let's let's start. It's okay. Let's just take this one line. Proving. Proving. Do you know what proving means? Yeah. What is it? Uh, it's hard to say. Um, to give to someone understanding uh, that you can't do it. Okay. To prove. Okay. To prove is to show that it is true, okay? Yes. For whatever reason, to show that it is true. Okay. Nature. Nature. What is nature? Anyone Solid. else can... What's that? Environment. Okay. It is... When we talk about nature, we are giving a face to reality. It's, it's what we call personification. You've heard of Mother Nature? That, that name, Mother Nature, as though nature was a person? I didn't. You didn't? Okay. How, anybody else? Has anybody else heard of that? Mother yes. Nature? Mother Nature? Yes. Um, the Greeks called it Gaia, the earth, the earth, the power of the earth. Okay. So, nature's law is the way things are supposed to be, okay? That is the way life is. So when you prove that nature is wrong, okay, what are you saying? Anybody want to jump in on this? 
you are breaking the laws. Okay, who said that? Uh, who, who? Alvaro. Oh, Alvaro, yes. Uh, yeah. Give me some more detail. What do you mean? Uh, when you are something, when you are doing something different than the rest of the people, I mean, breaking the the normal laws. Mm -hmm. so, okay, you are breaking that normal law. You're doing it differently. Um, I see it a little differently, but that's okay. <laughs> that's okay because in this, everybody has a different opinion, and there's no one right answer here. Would anyone else like to say what he or she thinks? Oh, come on. Elaine, what about you? Uh, so, proving nature's law is wrong, we can learn to walk without having faith. Ooh. Um, this is nice. I, I think that... Um, you can think that uh, the world is not always like people say that things should be or could be. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, in some ways, someone or something can prove that uh, things are different. Okay. Okay, I, I see what you're saying there. Things are different from what it's supposed to be. Is that what you're saying? Yes, yes. Okay, all right. Well, good. All right, you get to read this next line then. Read that I? for me, please. Yes, please do. Funny it seems. Funny it seems, but by keeping it dreams, it learns to breathe, breathe. fresh air. Oh, wow. Okay, um... What does that mean to you? Does it mean anything? Of course, yeah. Um, it seems. Uh, I'm thinking Italian. <laughs> oh, that's okay. <laughs> so, so, I first need to think in Italian so I can translate, uh, maybe translate in, in English and yes. then I can try to say something to you. It's quite hard. You know? I understand, yes, yes. <laughs> so, uh, it's something nice. Um, uh, learn to, to breathe fresh air. Mm, this learn to new life and things new I don't know okay yeah that that is um, a metaphor um, at least I see it as a metaphor that learning to breathe fresh air is a way of saying this this person who lives in the the concrete of the city is by keeping its dreams by keeping its hopes alive it's learning to uh, look at freedom outside of wherever it is. It's looking outside of itself. Okay? Does that make sense? Mm, yeah. You're, you're not locked into sure. something just because somebody told you you have to be there. Okay? Oh, yes. It's great. And, okay. That's what I'm seeing. Um, again, does anyone agree with me or disagree? Because this is poetry. And there is no right answer here. Essa, how about you? What do you think? Uh, in my opinion, yes, uh, it has dream to be free. So, by keeping its dream, in in the end, it learned uh, to be free and to breathe with fresh air. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, I see over here, um, Kolusha. Uh, it says to fight to realize something, and I'm saying probably one's one's hopes. Um, again, please, I, I wish more of you could join in, but let's take this last line. And Essa, if you could read that for me, please. Okay. Long live the rose that grew from concrete. Concrete, yes. Uh, when no one else ever cared. Okay, tell me what you think that means. 
Oh, I'm thinking. It's okay. Take your time. Take your time. Okay. Yeah, and the rose lives long. Okay. Long live is more of a command here. Um, it's like long live the king. Um, in other words, may this person live a long time. May this person live a long time. Okay, so long live the rose um, is a word of praise. Uh, not it should live a long time, but let it be great. Let it be powerful. Let us celebrate it. Okay? Does that help you? Yes. yes. Okay, let's talk about it some more then. Uh, so if we're saying let's celebrate this rose or symbolically this person, um, what, what is he saying here? Well, the, the, the rose grew and overcome all kind of difficulties to, okay. to live like maybe some people that born in born poor with in poor country with no care of government or education or family and they can make something uh, exceptional mm, like okay like a lot of soccer players for example the uh -huh. drove come from africa a uh, very conflict country and he made he made it play in the in the chelsea and won the Euro europa champion league and okay it's a great People like the rose that grew in the concrete. So, right. long life to the dear of rock. Okay. I, I see what you're saying. That makes a lot of it, It's called uh, our attention. It's in, in tears. It's not easy. It's not common. But you can make it. Okay, was that Oliver? Yeah, it's me. Okay. Hello, Oliver, and welcome. Hello, teacher. Thank you. Um, okay. Now, I've got a question for you. Can anyone guess, and this is just a guess, the name of the person who wrote this? The name? The name of the poet who wrote this. Any idea, any guess? Um... No, I have a clue. I okay, uh, what was that, Elaine? I don't have a clue. I don't no. know. Okay. <laughs> Who said Tupac Shakur? Furkan. Furkan. And you <laughs> said that because you saw it. <laughs> oh. okay. Has anyone heard of Tupac Shakur? No, it's the no. first time. No. Okay. Tupac Shakur was a major rap artist. You familiar with rap music? Yeah. Oh, but, yes, yes. Um, oh, he, died. he was big. He died in 1996. He was shot, actually. Um, there was this huge rivalry between, like, the East Coast rappers and the West Coast rappers, which made no sense to me. Um, but, I mean, they violently went after each other. And, and Tupac, I think, was a West Coast guy. Um, but you generally don't think of rap artists, and that's what he was, as being poets. Okay? But well, this, the, yeah. The, 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 the songs, the lyrics songs, a lot of time have a very power lyrics. And the rock, too. Very much. Very the much. Blue. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you think of something like Bob Dylan. You think of something by the yeah. Beatles. Yeah. Uh, and then you got Tupac here, and and Bobby, no one associated. Bobby. Yeah. The Doors, Jim Morrison was a, a poetry. Um, I think Riders to the Sea was was close to poetry. Um, 
I think this is more poetry than some of Jim Morrison's stuff. But uh, well, yeah, if that's your opinion. <laughs> <laughs> well, justify your opinion. Tell me why. That's what this class is about. Well, uh, I, 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 uh, if you look in, in any song of Jim Morrison, you can, you you could see a lot of poetry like. That kind of poetry that used to uh, write maybe William Blake or Berlin or Charles Baudelaire or Arthur Rimbaud. Okay, we'll tell you what then. Let's take um, "Light My Fire." Okay, one of the most famous. Yeah, but of yeah, but, but that song is not written by Jim Morrison. That song was written by Robbie Krieger. Okay, give me one of his. Give me one of Morrison's then. Um, was yeah. "Writers to the Sea" one of his? The end. This is the end. Okay, the end. Tell me about it. Beautiful friend. The wow. end. Wow. <laughs> Come on. It's a it's a very long poem. Okay. Um, what makes that poetry? The the language, I guess. Okay. All that all that picture that he can do with the language. They okay. can pa paint, paint a uh, uh, ima uh, virtual image in your mind when you listen the li the lyrics and they are coupled very well with music too. Okay. I'll, I'll tell you what, um, something I would like you to do if we do more classes like this, and I certainly hope to, is bring a song or a poem, like something by Jim Morrison, um, Bob Dylan, uh, compare it to some of the classical poets, your, your John Donne and William Blake, uh, Baudelaire. Um, that would be cool. <laughs> that would be a fun class. I, I, actually, the name of the band, The Doors, was yes. inspired in a, in a book of uh, William Blake. Okay. Uh, which book? Uh, I don't remember, but it said that uh, there's something new or something that I'm new, and between there, there are doors. Mm, okay. And that makes sense. That makes sense. Do how many people understand what Farkhan is talking about? Okay. No, who was saying that? That was Oliver. I'm sorry, Oliver. Smack me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, no problem. Does, does anyone understand? How many people understand this? We're getting into a conversation about the nature of poetry. Um, and, and what he's saying, and, and I tend to agree by and large, is that many popular songs, many very popular songs, are poetry. Okay, or have poetry in them. Do you agree? Yes, I agree with this. Okay, tell me why, Elaine. Yes, because we have some nice songs and they are beautiful to speak about life and people, or maybe about poverty. Um, I think that. In in some ways, they, they are nice, they are kind of poet. Uh, poet. Okay. Can you give me an example? No. <laughs> <laughs> Can you try? <laughs> oh my god, let me think about just a nice song. Hmm, a nice English song. Well, if it's one in Italian or Brazilian or Portuguese, can you transliterate it? In Portuguese, let me think. Uh, oh, there are so many. Uh, I, I think that rap is, uh, is a, a big example because mm -hmm. they always speak about... Um, Life in mm -hmm. some ways and people. I don't know. I can't think about nothing particular. Sorry. Okay. Oh, that's all right. That's all right. Um, okay. Uh, let's see. Owner says they speak about gangster stuff. 
Oh, yes. yes. Um, what do we mean by gangster? Oh, no, you want to tell me? I? Uh -huh. No, oh, no. Uh, by that, I mean that about drugs, about guns, oh, yes. rock and roll. Anyway, the rappers, they sometimes speak about rock and roll. Okay. Uh, actually, I think that there were lots of bad stuff in music. No, I can remind something like British pop punk in 1890 uh, years. It was just mix of some words. Then the, that song was very meaningful. Okay, do you think um, the, the British punk might have captured an idea of, of a culture in Britain at the time? Uh, I think that yes. Like Probably how? It was. Okay, tell me, could you give me some detail? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to remember when you're lost. <laughs> you're not as old as I am. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, Alvaro, how about you? What do you think? I think um, nowadays it's difficult to. Um, uh, to hear some song with uh, uh, poetry lyrics. For example, when I, when I go out with my friends or whatever, I usually heard, uh, hear um, a lot of songs without sense, you know, only music and that you can dance and it's all. No, no, it's not necessary to have uh, an interest ly lyrics or it is with uh, something to tell you. Okay, um, so when you go out to a dance club, a discotheque, something like that, um, they play the music. Um, do you do you do like raves where they you know do this mix of the music constantly pounding, something like that? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. I think in general, um, the most quantity of the music and that is nowadays seen in at the radio, for example, or. Mm -hmm. There is yeah. some artists that usually try to do um, uh, interesting lyrics, not only music, but mm -hmm. in general, nowadays I think music is only, only the sound, not the lyric. I think it's the sound, not the lyrics. Okay, now, do you know of, of much music that has lyrics to it, or, or just the, what you know is the sound? It's just the sound, the beat, the rhythm. Well, sorry? It, it, I'm sorry, I'm speaking too quickly. When you are thinking of music, yeah, what you are familiar with is the sound, the the beat of the music, the rhythm, not the words that are being sung. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah. Are there words in the music that you hear? Um. I, I hear a, a lot of music, but I think um, you can check uh, and some artist artist to to listen um, music with with interesting lyrics or poetry lyrics, but it's not usual. Uh, okay. If you put the radio or whatever, the most the most part of time you usually um, listen. Um, I don't remember the kind of music. It's uh, like reggaeton or whatever. It's mm -hmm. only dance, you know. And it's really, I don't know. I, I, I can. I don't want to to offend someone. <laughs> I think <laughs> well, it's we're friends. Really stupid lyrics, you know. <laughs> they, I mean, they, sometimes in in a free conversation as this is, yeah. um, we can we can not like some lyrics that we hear. It's okay. I mean, okay. I definitely don't like certain things. Um, <laughs> I promise you. I don't like most rap, to be honest with you, but some of it is, is, is just beautiful, like this poem I thought was yeah, beautiful. Yeah, I agree. Um, okay, let's go on. Uh, let's see. Roberto, um, I haven't really talked to you yet. Uh, tell me, what do you think? Uh, if music is, in, is inspired by poetry? Well, what do you think about poetry in general? Um, uh, sometimes I have a hard time uh, uh, reading poetry. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. Um, sometimes I don't get the figuratively speech of the poem. Mm 
-hmm. I don't know if I am inter interpreting right or I don't... Sometimes I get the idea that poems have to rhyme and when I read a poem that is more like a composition I don't follow very much the idea. Okay, well, so you're thinking of like this one, it's not much of, uh, it's hard to follow than the one we read because it's, um, let me pop up here, it does not rhyme and it, it doesn't uh, have a, a meter to it? Uh, yeah, and it's, uh, it has a lot of symbolism, I think, abstract, yeah. abstract things, mm -hmm. and it's not quite clear what it's sometimes, what the author is referring to, for me. Mm -hmm. Now, now I, I've made the statement, and again, nothing mm -hmm. in here, you don't have to agree with anything that I say, is that, uh, poetry means, doesn't really have one meaning, and that any meaning you get yeah. from a poem is the right one. It's kind uh, of ambiguous. Ambiguous, yes. yes. Do you pull any kind of meaning? Does anything, does this say anything to you at all? Mm, yes, but okay. not literally. From no, no, okay. Well, tell me what, share with me what it is you think about this. I think, for example, the last two lines, long live the rose that grew from concrete when no one else ever cared. I think it's acknowledging the existence of something that defies the natural order. Ah, okay. I hadn't thought of that. <laughs> Actually, I hadn't thought of that at all. But yeah, I, I, I understand what, why you're saying that and how you get it. That's great. Thank you. That is good. Okay, um, let's turn to... I, I, yes, Elaine. I didn't understand uh, what Roberto says. Can you, can you repeat it, Kevin? Um, Roberto, go ahead yourself and, and then I'll, I'll follow up, okay? Go ahead. Uh, about the, my interpretation? Yes, the last two lines. Please speak okay. slower. Slow down, yes, slow down. Okay. Uh, long live the rose that grew from concrete when no one else ever cared. Okay. Well, I think it's uh, the old author is trying to acknowledge the existence of something or someone who uh, defies nature, who is not supposed to exist in, in that state. Okay. Now, let me, um, and again, Roberto, I'm going to follow up with the way I understand what you said, and, and you tell me whether or not you agree with that. Okay. There are some things that exist and flourish um, against all laws of nature um, and those things we celebrate uh, as being great because they defy what is considered the natural order. Is that about right, Roberto? Mm, that's exactly what, I'm, what I meant. It's okay. about, uh, it's something the difference, uh, something outstanding. Mm -hmm. Something outstanding. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I mean, I didn't see that, <laughs> but I'm glad you did because that's a different interpretation of, of what I was reading. That's very good. Thank you. Okay. Um, anyone else? Oh, somebody's making noise. Okay. <laughs> All right. I do have another one here that is a more traditional poem. It's very sad. Do you want to go with the sad one or the funny one? Funny one, please. The funny one, okay. <laughs> the funny one it is. I, I like the dark one. So who wants the sad one, Oliver? The dark one. The dark one. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what. Well, the, the, the dark and sad one is by Edgar Allan Poe, and I love the poem, but it's very sad. Instead, we'll do this one. And you may not have heard of this guy. I'd never heard of this guy. But I love the poem. And because Oliver wanted the dark one, he gets to read the first verse. Go ahead. <laughs> Be glad. Be glad your nose in the, is on your face, not placed on some other place. For it were where it is not, you might dislike your nose a lot. Imagine That's all. If, okay, stop, 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 stop. Be glad your nose is on your face, not pasted on some other place. For if it were where it is not, you might dislike your nose a lot. Huh. <laughs> what is he saying here? 
Somebody. Well, well, okay. If you uh you will have your nose in a different place, well maybe it will be not the best place to put your nose, you know, maybe if you put your nose near to your ass. Go uh, on, then use different language. It it <laughs> it will not be so convenient. Okay. So you had to be glad to that your nose is in your face. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, now notice he has words like face, pasted, place. Okay. Those all have a similar what we call an assonance to them, uh, and 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 hints at a way that you can't really understand, but you feel the whole idea of the face. Um, and he twists the language around, for if it were where it is not, you might dislike your nose a lot. I like that. Okay, let's see. Who would like to read this next part? Asa, you read that, please. Imagine. Ima Could you imagine if your blind. precious nose were a sandwich in between your toes. That clearly would not be a trick for you to be forced to smell your feet. Okay. <laughs> Tell me about this. That's what I mean. And, uh, <laughs> it, yes, it means, uh, Imagine if if there were a sandwich between your toes. And, okay. And, when, and, and it couldn't, it can it cannot be treated, so... Okay. And smell, smells... <laughs> smell like cheese. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so jeez, and that's all you would smell. <laughs> I, I need sounds too. You need. <laughs> all right. Uh, anyone else want to uh, take a look at that? I think you write the poem just for the rhyme. <laughs> just for the rhyme. Yeah, yeah. Um, nose and toes and treat feet. Uh, you know, he's doing things here. And cheese. And cheese. <laughs> <laughs> and people wonder why I like teaching. <laughs> okay. Um, now, sandwiched here, uh, we did have a question from Sonia. What does sandwiched mean? Would anyone like to explain that to her? What we mean by, what we say, what do we mean by sandwiched? Is it like that? Yeah, okay. that. Okay, for Ken, go ahead. Uh, between two things, <laughs> like doing right. that. So we have, I have this bag. Yes. Oops. And another thing. And my hand, and the bag is sandwiched between my hand. Is that what yeah. you're saying? Okay. Yes. Yeah. yes. Like, like a sandwich. Like a sandwich. Yeah, like a cheese sandwich. Like a cheese. <laughs> 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 you can't get over this cheese now, can you? <laughs> I can do it all day. <laughs> No, no, uh, Oliver, what kind of cheese are we talking about here? About the Parmesan cheese? About Parmesan cheese, okay. Uh, Let's about see. our precious nose. About a precious nose, okay. <laughs> oh, who knows? Um, let's see. Now, let's. let's uh, oh, how about. Um, Avero, third verse, please. Yeah, your nose would be a source of dread. Where it attached atop your head. It soon will drive to the spur, forever tricked by your hair. Your nose would be a source of dread were it attached atop your head. It would soon drive you to despair, forever tickled by tickled. your hair. Tickled, yeah, like to make you laugh, to make you giggle. Um, now, my head would not mind it at all because I have no hair on the top of it. But <laughs> <laughs> let's let's see what some other people think about what this says. Uh, Owner, it's your turn. Owner? You there? Okay. Roberto. Mm, yes. Tell me what you think this this verse, this third verse says. What's it saying? 
that uh, if if the nose would be uh, located on on a, on somebody's head, it would be uh, very uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it would feel uh, if especially if a person is ticklish. <laughs> for all the hair. Well, uh, what happens when your own nose gets tickled? Okay, it might be tickled by something inside or, or by mustache or, or something like that. What does it make you do? Mm, a sneeze. Sneeze. So, can you imagine having your nose on the top of your head constantly making you sneeze? <laughs> Pretty awful. <laughs> Okay, um, Elaine, your turn. Okay. Within your ear, your nose would be an absolute catastrophe. 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 <laughs> let me let me break that down. Ca. Tas. Tas. Tro. Tro. Fi. Fi. Whoops. Catastrophe. Catastrophe. Yeah. Yes. Oops. We don't want to see me. We want to see this. Okay. Within your ear, your nose would be an absolute catastrophe. I agree. Uh. <laughs> Go on. For when you were obliged, obliged, obliged mm -hmm. to sneeze, your brain would... Rattle. Rattle. Rattle from the breeze. <laughs> okay. Now, what is he saying? What can you see in your mind happening here? A catastrophe. You, do you know what a catastrophe is? Yeah. Uh, it, it's a disaster. Yeah, an absolute, it's a, a disaster, a terrible thing. Yeah. Okay. Now, why would it be such a bad thing? Well, it tells us. Uh, Kevin, what yes. rotto does mean? Where? What? Which word? Rotto. Rattle. 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 Yeah. Would someone like to help her? Maybe annoying, disturbing, damage, damage. To shake something very. Uh, something bad. Energy. Um. Okay, it is to make a sound like someone is shaking inside. Um, do you know what the maracas are? Yes. Okay, when you shake maracas, the seeds inside rattle. That's, that's what's happening. Something is shaking. Okay. Hopping back and forth. So, so what he's saying here is if you're sneezing and your nose is inside your ear, your brain would fly back and forth like the beads in a maraca. Okay, okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Of no, think. <laughs> Could no, be you, a catastrophe, of course. Of course it would. Be hard to think, too. <laughs> okay, Furkan. Okay. <laughs> Your nose instead, through thick and thin, remains between your eyes and chin, not pasted on some other place. Be glad your nose is on your face. Very good. Very good. Now, do you think this poem, well, who do you think this poem is written for? Oh, no, again, I don't know. <laughs> uh, for rhyme, well, of course. For rhyme? Children. For children. This for guy, children. I, I looked him up, Joe Perdlowski, I would not heard of him before I read this poem, is a man who, who specializes in writing poems for children. He, uh, in his biography, he said he went to school, and when he went to school, he hated poetry. And he hated it because he figured he had a teacher who hated it, was told that she had to read a poem to the class each week, and so she'd find the most boring poem from the most boring book and say it in the most boring way possible. Um, yeah. <laughs> so he decided to change all that. <laughs> he oh, went. Yes. Uh, idea. He went to Hunter College, a very very good college in New York, 
and he actually failed English class three times. Can you imagine? He failed yeah. it. Um, I but can. The, yeah. Um, but he looked at the world just a little differently. Okay. Uh, well, any other, yes. Well, I maybe uh, I guess that is fine for a uh, for a child or for make some funny, but it's not a very big pun. Well, what do you mean? Oh. <laughs> well, it's okay for children. Yeah, it's it's like a joke. Okay. Is that a bad thing? No, no, it's a bad thing, but it's a different thing. So it's it's not for adults, you're saying? I don't think so. Why not? <sighs> well, I feel it in that way. Well, you've got to have a reason. Um, maybe it's too too basic, too much. Mm, I don't understand. Too basic. It's too basic, too simple. Too simple, too much, and too fu and too funny, and too funny. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay, he was the one that was the sad thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's yeah, true. He wanted the sad ones. Well, do you agree with Oliver? I mean, he raises a point. No, this is, this no. is very no. Who says no? Yeah, I, I say it. I, I say, have yeah. an yeah, objection ahead. with him. Please, please disagree. That's fine. Okay. Uh, Actually, I learned a lot from this poetry. <laughs> For it's evident that Almighty God is all powerful because uh, He passed it everything where it's suitable, and uh, so we must thank for God. We have nose <laughs> on our face. Okay, yeah. so um, I I okay. I, yeah. I I am in my mind. Like the lyric of a children's songs. Uh huh. Yeah. I I don't. So I I found it so similar so to other funny children songs. It well, it is. I don't think there's any question about that. But does that mean it's not poetry? Not so much. No, so serious poetry. No, okay. it's not. Poetry has. The need that some deep. Does it have to? I guess they have to have to be some deep. Yes. They have to make that you you're feeling that in some part your hair arise. Well, I wouldn't have that problem regardless. Or, 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 or but. make, <laughs> but not only in your head in your body. Yeah. Okay, you so you're saying it, it maybe in your heart or in your chest, or or or, or maybe you have to m m make some. You have to make you think. What okay. does he want to say? I, I, I mm -hmm. can interpret it in that way, in another way. Okay. And and they Oliver, have I'm going to have to interrupt you. Okay, it, 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 I, I understand. What, what, I'm going to. One last it. What's the last? Hurry, thing? hurry. We and got I other guess, people. Yeah, and I guess that it have to be. Some beauty or a power language too. Okay, so let me summarize. You're saying that poetry, all poetry, needs to make you think and needs to affect you deeply with its powerful language and powerful themes. Is that right? Yes, that's what I think. Great. Okay, great. Uh, that's a very valid opinion. Many people agree with you. Is there? Does anyone else agree with Oliver? <laughs> I don't agree. Okay, Furkan, go ahead. Actually, it depends what you are looking for in a rhyme, in a, in a poem. Okay. Uh, if you are looking for rhyme, uh, it's a good poem. If you are looking for meaning, the just before is better. Uh, mm -hmm. It depends what you're looking. That's right. Okay. Yes, are, I think it's okay to have both. Mm -hmm. Now, are you suggesting? And and now I'm really going to throw a, a a monkey wrench into this. Is that the poem about the nose? Does not have meaning? Are you suggesting that it does not have meaning? No, it has. Well, what's its meaning? What's it for? It's what does it do? It's very clear. What's that? That you had to be glad that you 
had the your noise place where it be placed. Okay. And it's right. Maybe you don't see the deep point. But that, but that, but it doesn't make it uh, becoming automatically in a very powerful point. Okay, um, so I, that I think you were you're coming up with something. Was that you? Yeah. It, okay. It say. Look, uh, it may look so simple, but it may have another deep meaning. Maybe we cannot see. Maybe Oliver cannot see. Okay. Yeah, maybe. If um, if you were to see, or if I asked you to find a deep meaning, I'm um, not good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, anybody? Anybody want to take a look at this? Okay. What I see a poem like this do, and, and to me as an adult, it, it made a lot of sense, is that it's important to take things we, we simply believe are true, we simply believe it are true and we don't question them, and to question them. Well, of course your nose isn't going to be anywhere than where it is, but let's look at it a different way, just to see it differently. Okay, let's go back with what Essa said. You know, we were made in a certain way. God made us in a certain way. Well, what if he made us in a different way? <laughs> you know, what would it be like? What would the world be like if we saw something different? Which is why I think that poem, um, it's a funny poem, uh, but it also says something different. It's something different. Um, it's funny, indeed. Yeah. We, we tend to think that humor something funny isn't isn't serious isn't important I look at it very very differently um, but I think we have a few minutes let's take a look at one very famous and very serious poem that I love it's probably the greatest love poem ever written and it's also one of the saddest ones ever written okay and I'm going to read it okay and that might wrap things up <clears throat> It was many and many a year ago in a kingdom by the sea that a maiden lived there whom you may know by the name of Annabelle Lee. This maiden she lived with no other thought than to love and be loved by me. I was a child and she was a child in this kingdom by the sea, but we loved with a love that was more than love, I and my Annabelle Lee, with a love that the winged seraphs of heaven coveted her and me. And this was the reason that long ago in this kingdom by the sea, a wind blew out of a cloud chilling my beautiful Annabel Lee, so that her highborn kinsman came and bore her away from me to shut her up in a sepulcher in this kingdom by the sea. The angels, not half so happy in heaven, were envying her and me. Yes, that was the reason, as all men know, in this kingdom by the sea, that the wind came out of the cloud by night, chilling and killing my Annabelle Lee. But our love, it was stronger by far than the love of those who were older than we, of many far wiser than we, and neither the angels in heaven above nor the demons down under the sea can ever dissever my soul from the soul of the beautiful Annabelle Lee. For the moon never beams without bringing me dreams of the beautiful Annabelle Lee, and the stars never rise, but I feel the bright eyes of the beautiful Annabelle Lee. And so, all the night tide, I lie down by the side of my darling, my darling, my life and my bride, in her sepulchre there by the sea, in her tomb by the sounding sea. Does anyone know that poem? Had anyone ever heard of it? No. no. That no. is Annabelle Lee by Edgar Allan Poe. And Edgar Allan Poe wrote some really bizarre stories. And he also yeah. wrote some, some beautiful poems. And this is one of his most famous. If, if you were to tell me what this poem is about, what would you say? Uh, first of all, Oliver, are you happy that this is a serious poem? <laughs> yeah. Okay. But... <laughs> but um... Well, I th I think that Edgar Allan Poe was a very good uh, story writer. Mm -hmm. Maybe their poem is not the best. 
You're saying Annabelle Lee was not one of his best poems? No, I said that the poetry of Edgar Allan Poe is not so be so good as their uh, histories, like the mm. murder on on the like the uh, killer in the room or. or Oh, the murder of the room morgue. That's a nice little yeah. twisty mystery. Yeah. Okay. Let let's let me ask others. What do you think? Uh, he loves so much Annabelle Lee, and mm -hmm. he wrote a poem about it. But to understand the deep meaning, we have to look at, look back. I think. Okay. What what happened to her? Now this is based on a real event. This was based on a woman he married. And she died very young from tuberculosis. Someone took him. Someone took her, not him. Uh, he, uh, he loved him, but someone took him and took her. Why am I doing this? <laughs> yeah, she died. Who took her? Who took her away from him? Uh, he said the angels, the mm -hmm. wind. The nation. Like yeah. And, and let, me, let me throw up something here. It, it seemed that she... She was falling into the sea in a storm, maybe? Well, let's see. It says that um, their love was one that the winged seraphs of heaven, those the highest level of the nine orders of angels, um, you know, they envied that kind of love. And it's not that she fell into the storm, but what happened? A wind came out of the cloud by night. She died. Something killed her. And it was the fact that she was so beautiful and so lovely that the angels in heaven themselves wanted her with them. Pretty intense. Pretty intense. Um, it, oh, it's beautiful. And then the love between them was such that even heaven and hell could not separate them because he's always there, always remembering her. Anyway, beautiful poem. It's one of my favorites. It's sad. It's sad. Um, it's beautiful. It is beautiful. And, and it meets Oliver's criteria even better. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it is time to go, though. Our time is up. But I oh, hope yeah. to see you again. Um, you. I hope to see you again, too, this sir. And thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank bye you bye. very much. Thank you, Kevin. As always, thank my pleasure. Bye-bye. 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 Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Kevin.